Aloha! Michelle Hernandez here and welcome to Life is Constant Hawaii TV. This channel is about bringing you hope, love, and a bit of God. Today we're going to be talking about what does it mean to be prepared. So stick with me and let's check it out together. All right, well, <laughs> today is, um, these are crazy times for sure. And, you know, with the inauguration of the president of, um, and all the praying that has been going on, I mean, this whole past year of 2020 really um, has just been a, a year of restrictions and confusion and a lot of fear, a lot of praying. Uh, I've been contending in prayer for so long, so hard. And, you know, here's the turn of a uh, year, and here is, um, you know, um, certain things that haven't happened like as uh, like a lot of prophets have indicated. You know, uh, some have, and, uh, and God moves in mysterious ways, and we all know that. And the whole thing that came to my mind for this week's message was about being prepared. Because I've been in a state of being prepared for, boy, like seven months, seriously wondering if like a war was going to happen or something some uproar in our country was going to occur and i guess it could still happen and so i was thinking well do you just stop being prepared and what does that mean well when we when if things get confusing at least for me i go back to the bible and this praying to the lord and to say you know okay what is it lord what am i to do because this is going on for a while and yes it hasn't been 40 years like you know some stories in the bible but it was certainly long in my time because I'm just not the most patient person in the world. And what does it mean to be prepared? Well, yeah, we can be prepared with water or for an electrical outage or with food and things like that. And is it? And there are some people that maintain that preparedness and like all that kind of stuff forever. Like there's people that say, you know, I'm ready. I can survive three years, you know, and um, I'm not one of those. But I do think that to a certain extent there's it's wisdom to have some backups because we could lose electricity for a lot of different reasons. We could lose, you know, the ability, uh, we could have shortages like we've seen in 2020 or with respect to certain products. So let's stay stocked up to a certain extent I would I would think is wise. But the biggest prepare, being prepared in the, in the warning of the Bible is being prepared for the return of Jesus. And that means morally being prepared, not so much like looking at the, the world in the natural. And there's a, a great parable that Jesus talks about in the New Testament where he's talking about, uh, he uses the story of um, the bridesmaids, that they're coming together. They're, and he says like there are wise ones and there's foolish ones. And the story goes, and I'm going to just paraphrase it because um, you know, I don't know it all by heart, but it was like, it's, the story goes that they're all dressed in their gowns and they're, they're going to have, they have oil in their lamps and they're going to um, wait for the bridegroom to return, which in the story is Jesus, the return of Jesus to come and to come to the wedding, which means like we're going into entering into the kingdom of heaven, and, but we have to wait for him. And so there was, so they all come and you don't know initially between in the story who is who is wise and who is foolish and they're because they all look the same and they're all carrying lamps and you know they all initially have oil at least but the wise ones are prepared that it might take longer than what they know or they plan and the foolish ones are the ones that just have enough of the oil in the lamp for what they think is going to happen the timing that they feel when the bridegroom will come to invite them to the way and so what happens is they're all waiting and the lamps are burning and uh, it does take longer and the and the foolish ones they're running out of oil the bridegroom is coming and when they run out of oil they're like asking the wise ones well give me some of your oil and the wise ones are like no I can't give you my oil this is my backup oil if I give it to you then I won't have enough so the foolish ones have to go back to town in the middle of the night or something like that just as the story goes and things are closed and their plan doesn't work because they were thinking they would know the timing of the Lord well and while they're going trying to find more oil for their lamps the bridegroom Jesus comes and the uh, ones that were uh, prepared, the ones that had the backup oil, were the ones that were invited in to the wedding and the doors were closed. 
by the time that the bride's maids came, the foolish ones, back with some oil, they draw like the door is closed and um, the story goes, you know, let they ask to be let in and then, you know, Jesus is like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. And so they're not allowed in. That is like talking about like the end of days and when Jesus, the Bible promises that the, the that Jesus will have a second coming back to the earth and will collect um, us, the righteous, righteous children of him, the ones that say yes to Jesus, the ones that said yes to being a son and daughter of Jesus. And also though, it's not, it's, it's also we have to be ready for him. We have to be the ones that know him, that have a relationship with him, the ones that fostered a relationship with him. The, you know, like I've been talking about praying to him, talking to him, listening for his voice, recognizing how he's speaking to you, and then doing things according to to what he's directing you to do because the scripture also says you know trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding of things do not rely on your own timing of things um, but in always acknowledge him and he shall direct your your steps sometimes we can get so caught up into our own planning and our own mental like mind and like researching things and seeing and it's great to increase our knowledge and all that I'm not saying do not do that it's always good to increase our knowledge on things, but in the end, my best business plan and my best preparation of things was to follow the Spirit. And I recognize, um, even recently, that there's a lot of people, there's a gap on that. Like, there's many of us that don't hear from God, perhaps as I do, and I don't get it right all the time either, but I do hear from God, and I have so many testimonies and wonderful miracles, I call it, and it because of my direction that as, as I follow the Lord's direction and not my own. There are things that I don't want to do that he's asking me to do that I do out of obedience because of my love to him. So I do. And when I do step into those things, I am always greatly rewarded. And I don't do it for the reward. I do it for the love of my Savior as of what he's ultimately already done for me, giving his life for my eternal soul, my eternal spirit that will continue to go on in the kingdom of heaven when I leave the physical realm. That's why I do it. So in prep, when we want to be prepared, we really want to be prepared <clears throat> spiritually. We want our hearts and our lives to be centered and in, in with Christ. We want to, to always lead, put our eyes on Jesus and follow his ways. And if we aren't hearing from God clearly right now, then go into the Bible and lean into the word more and start listening to the stories of other people where they start telling you what has how what has been done learn his character start studying him and he will respond by talking to you like go ahead and like start talking to him too like in the in the form of a prayer it's just as it's, it's just talking to him recognize this is a person this isn't just you know a spirit he is a person um, that wants to have a relationship with you and so the biggest way of being prepared besides you know so you know, have your backup water and all that but the biggest way of being prepared is spiritually being prepared. You know, people get, sometimes they get under fear with these like end of days um, discussions and things when people talk about, oh, you know, we're in the end times. Meaning, and the Bible talks about in the end times how, you know, morally corrupt things are going to be and then things like there's going to be sin and all, and all this stuff all around and certainly it's here. We, we've been in end times for thousands of years. We still don't know. It's not meant to know the day or hour of his return. So that's why we have to make sure that the best, to the best of our ability with Jesus' help, that we are walking in his ways because his ways are always the best ways for us. The Bible doesn't tell us to make a bunch of plans. In fact, if you go back to that parable in the story of the bridesmaids, he's, not, he's just saying be prepared because you're not going to know the timing. So have your backup oil. And what does, you know, sometimes oil represents Holy Spirit and being in the, uh, just drenched in the word of the Lord. So know him. Know his character. Stay in relationship and conversation with him. Don't think that, you know, just because I ask for forgiveness that he'll always forgive me. He will forgive you. But to, to sit there and walk in a sinful lifestyle and then just depend on the forgiveness of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, um, that promise, that's not a true relationship. That's not a real good relationship. Like that's like think about if you were married and you took a vow of, you know, having um, a monogamous relationship with your spouse and then turning around 
and being like, oh, well, he, he or she married me forever, so they won't divorce me, but also I'm going to go and have these affairs and all this stuff and, and betray this, this vow that I had with my spouse. Well, not many spouses are going to tolerate that, and nor is that going to be a happy marriage. So think about that kind of relationship and went out with Jesus. Jesus is a jealous God, and He wants our loyalty. He wants us to be focused in on Him. He should be the number one thought in our mind every day as we live and breathe this physical realm. And then the rest will follow, for the rest will go so well and beautifully. And it's just, it's a relationship. That's what we need to stay in preparation for. With this end times, I recently heard um, a man of God say, you know, end times is happening, but I, but it's happening around me, but I'm happening to end times. End times isn't happening to me. I'm happening to the end, end times. Meaning, I'm a weapon inside these circumstances because Christ is in me and I'm, I'm following the direction of Jesus Christ himself. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, He's directing. He's on the throne, everyone. You know, the, what's really cool too is, is that in, when you look back in the history of uh, time, that the, the biggest moves of God always happened when all these circumstances um, were really horrendous. Like there was always like this ginormous sinful time and these, these wars or whatnot or just corruption you know, was happening all around the world, but then God steps in to do His revivals, to his, to give um, big, big moves of God, these miraculous uh, moves, and, you know, big time miracles, and all these healings, and just wonderful things. I mean, go back and look at the history. And so we're, we have this opportunity right now to foster in Holy Spirit and the big move of God. It's happening in, in different places, but I want to be ready for that. I want to be ready to help you know, when God is ready to do that big move, I want to be the one chosen that never uh, lost hope in Him. Now, I'm always understanding that He still is on the throne. No matter what prophetic word happened or did not happen, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep focus on and keep our eyes on Jesus and know that He is He is the King. He is in control. And God will move in His way. And when He wants to move, it's going to be in His timing, not according to man's time, not according to the inauguration date or, you know, it's a certification date of Congress for the President. That's not, that has no effect on, on God. And yes, we have our hopes and we want our expectations of like now, and I'm one of those people for sure. But in the, in the meantime, as I wait on God, I'm going to start doing what he, he, continue to do what he directs me to do and understanding my sphere of influence in the world. Because we're all called to be a light into the darkness and we all have our small influences in the world. But I mean, remember God, Jesus is a Lord that leaves the, the 99 to save the one. So even if your influence is one person, that's not a little light. It's actually a ginormous light. You're shining the light of Jesus on a light. And if you have not yet said yes or no, yes to being a daughter or son of to Jesus, then I'm going to put the salvation prayer in the uh, description below, as I always do, for you to say out loud and believe in your heart that um, He is the Lord and Savior and He died for all of us. And, um, and when you say it, you will be part of our family. So I encourage you to do that if you haven't already done that. The whole message today about being prepared, I think, is primarily... Let's just be prepared spiritually. Let's just keep our heart in alignment with the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes I just say this prayer. Um, I do say this prayer actually in day, in daily. You know, it says, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, thank you for being here. I love you with all my heart and soul. I submit my spirit to you, Holy Spirit, because you are always perfectly aligned with the kingdom of heaven, and you know the Father's will. And this, I want to do what the Heavenly Father wants me to do. So I submit myself to you, Holy Spirit, and thank you for directing my path, in Jesus' name. And so this is my this is a daily prayer I do, and I encourage you to, to join me in on that for yourself, your life, and, your, and being prepared. When will Jesus come back? Well, I don't know. We're not to know. And will it be soon? It's okay with me, because I am prepared. I'm ready. I'm ready to go to the kingdom of heaven and have the second coming um, and have no more death and no more illness and no more fighting. I'll just have be surrounded by this beautiful divine love. I'm ready for that. But that 
may not very well may not happen in my lifetime and that's okay so now the other preparation that I'm doing is like to be able to be that person be able to use that be used as a vessel for the purposes of Jesus Christ as long as I have air in my lungs there's an assignment for me to do on earth and so I just want to do what the father wants me to do because whatever he wants me to do and the plans that he has for us is he's the one that makes the plans not me he makes the plans for us our job is to pray and, um, and and intercede and follow his direction and if we cannot hear him well enough yet then get into the Word of God start listening to videos and learning how to hear from him and praying to him to be able to hear better to be able to understand how his heavenly ways on communication to us because he is faithful to answer those prayers just ask him for it ask him for it it's just the most beautiful beautiful thing that I could ever recommend as far as like you know the relationship that we have with Jesus and our Heavenly Father and, and Holy Spirit it's absolutely beautiful it's a game changer in a lifetime so that's how I would be prepared and if you uh, also study what God has already done in the miraculous study the supernatural ways of our Father God because it builds hope in us we have to have continue to be hopeful that he's still on the throne and he is there's victories in the midst of of um, it's like it's not even small victories I mean really like the whole idea that what we found with the Dominion voting machines um, on what was um, that there was an issue with those machines is a miracle in itself because it like you know I believe that that stuff's been happening for a very long time and the fact that we found out you know this past year that there was some major thing you know happening with these machines now there's continuing investigation so we don't so there, this stuff might not be over. I don't know, but I'm not going to be overly consumed with it. I'm just going to trust in the Lord and then just concentrate on what can I do as this one person, Michelle Hernandez, on the island of Maui. What is my sphere of sphere of influence? How can I influence people for Jesus under the Father's will as He directs me to do? What can I do? And so there's my focus and there's my prayers and I will continue to contend for our my nation the United States of America and I will continue to believe that there is still lots to uncover that there is the corruption will be uprooted and we will once again turn back to be a righteous nation under the eyes of the Lord and that we will be unified instead of divided at all this division that we see right now so I'm going to stay and continue to pray for my country my island my state and I encourage you to do the same for um, yourself. In the meantime, listen to what the Father is saying and let's start doing that and making sure that we are living a righteous life as much as we can and that with the assistance of Jesus Christ himself you know, until, until we're called home to the kingdom of heaven, however, whichever way and whenever that occurs. <laughs> so that's what I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't, you know, already, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the notifications, share the channel. Let's get the good news out to other people that can be encouraged by messages of hope. And also, um, you can download my book, The Father's Love. It's free. It's a free PDF um, that's in the description below. Take, download that, share it to whoever. It's just about a little bit more information about me and my testimony and how to reach the wonderful, beautiful Heavenly Father's love. And so um, that's it for now. Until next time, mahalo and aloha.